Hey, everybody. Um, I'm hiding behind my computer a little bit. Um, I'm Stephen Woods. Uh, oh, yeah. I have a slide for this. This is me. No, I'm, this is the view from the top of the tower. I don't <coughs> know if anyone has had the chance to go up there in San Francisco, the 61st floor. Um, I work at Salesforce for four years. I've been working there for four years, and I've been making web applications for 20 years. Horrible, nightmare life. Um, but what can you do? Anyway, um, this is the thing we have to put up every time we give a presentation if we work for Salesforce. So you have to promise not to make purchasing decisions based on whatever I say. So um, before I start, I just want to say that my goal here is to, we don't have enough time to really teach you how to use uh, LWC and the base components, but I'd like you to see that it's, a lot of people think it sounds a little bit scary and different, but I find that it's actually quite a bit easier to get your job done once you've moved to LWC. You will build things faster. Uh, it's a really simple decision. So I hope that once you go back to wherever you work, you feel excited to try out LWC at a project. Um, and using our base components, you'll see that you're very, very productive and it works. You'll be happier than you were before, I promise. Um, <coughs> so I just want to discuss a little bit about the journey we, this feels so weird, <laughs> I can't see you. Um, the journey we, we took to get to LWC. Um, and the question that the architects asked was, what would Salesforce look like if we built it today? I mean, as you know, Salesforce was originally built um, in 1999. It was a long time ago. It was built the way web applications are traditionally built, where you have a big server application. It makes HTML. It sends it down to the client. This is how web pages have been built my entire career. Um, and then, not too long ago, although it feels like a long, long time ago, um, we moved over to Lightning. And Lightning is very different in that you have a bunch of information about components that are sent to the client, and then the client application starts up, and it assembles all the components and builds an application that you can actually use. And the advantage of this, of course, is that our customers can build their own pieces to the application that live in the application just like the native parts. So custom, in, in theory, customization is very easy, and the customization you build really integrates for quite well with the application. So when we designed Lightning, the internet looked a bit like this. We had a very small amount of web features that we could build upon, and then all the, the magic came from frameworks. So if you were out building something in 2013, 2014, you might have been using uh, Angular, uh, what are all the other ones, React, there's a million, there were a million frameworks at the time, there was jQuery, there was jQuery UI, there was ext.js, there were so many different ways to build applications, and they were completely different. So if you were trying to hire someone, particularly if you're trying to hire a Salesforce developer, you're trying to find someone who knew Aura, had experience with Lightning development. And if they had previously built with Angular, they'd built with any of the other frameworks, they might not have anything really that they could apply to the new environment they were in. It was totally different. So if we we're going to build it today, how would we do it? Well, the good news is, in the last five years, the browsers have added a ton of new features that are extremely powerful and make it possible to build a lot of the stuff that we relied on frameworks before natively. So we can use web components, which I'm going to talk about more. But one of the big ones is modules, ECMAScript 7 and 6. Um, just sort of a, a much more powerful environment make it, it makes it quite a bit easier to build a large scale application without relying on a framework to handle all the work. So that means, what is Lightning Web Components? Lightning Web Components is just, a, in theory, a very small piece on top of a native experience. So we're building the pieces you need to integrate with Salesforce, but everything underneath is in the browser, it's the native. Unfortunately, if you are like many companies, you're stuck in IE 11, you're stuck in older browsers, we have to transpile and polyfill a lot of those features. But over time, um, what Diego likes, to, one of the architects of LWC likes to say is that we hope our framework disappears. Because as the browsers add more of these standards, which are already defined, they're just not necessarily implemented, we'll have to have less and less code inside of Lightning to do the work. It'll all be native. So what's the advantage of Web Components? I think we've had some, every time someone I meet someone who finds out about Web Components, they say, okay, well, that's different. Why would I want to switch? And why would you move away from Aura? And I think the simple answer is it's way easier to hire. I mean, that's, I think, the number one big thing is if you have a company or you're trying to hire developers and you say, 
oh, do you have experience with Vue.js? Do you have experience with Polymer? Do you have experience with Web Components? You can come and build on Lightning right away. It'll take you a day to get the hang of it. You don't have to learn Aura. You don't have to go to training. It's right on there. And on top of that, the tool chain that you're working with, SFTX, uh, ESLint, Babel, which is the transpiler, these are all standard, standard things that everyone who works in JavaScript and on the web is using today. So when you transition to the Lightning environment, instead of saying, all right, now you need to learn all the Lightning stuff. No, you actually already know it. This is just the same web development experience you've experienced before, very quick to onboard. So, but what is a web component? I talked a lot about it, but we actually don't, I didn't explain what it is. So if you've ever made a web page, you know about tags. You know about the sort of basic tabs. And in HTML5, they added a bunch of new ones, like video and picture and a few different features that are native parts of the web. Web components allows you to build your own tags. And that's it. That's the whole, the shortest way to explain what web components are. You're building a custom HTML tag. So if you want to build a web component with LWC, you just need a template. You need a, a JavaScript class. And that's it. That is the component. There's not a, anything more to it. It's very, very simple. And then, of course, this is the one thing that everyone is scared about. Are we going to make Aura go away? And the answer is no. Nothing ever goes away at Salesforce, ever. We're stuck with everything for the rest of our lives. Um, but the, gr the great thing, I think, for developers about LBC is that it, you can build pieces and integrate it to your existing Aura applications. They all work happily together. LWC components can live inside of Aura. And as far as you know, in Aura, they look like Aura components. They, you interact with them the same. They can talk to each other, and they use the same underlying services. So the Lightning Data Service is there, UI API, all the same pieces are all being accessed by Aura or, WC, or LWC. So you don't have to go, if you have a client and you're building a new component for them, you don't have to say, OK, well, we're migrating everything we built over the last five years to LWC. No, you can just say, oh, well, this one component, we'll try out LWC, and it will work just seamlessly with what you've already got. So this whole talk was supposed to be about base components. So what are the base components? If you've used Aura, you've seen them before. We have all these little pieces that allow you to build a very quickly a nice, pretty application that integrates with Salesforce, ideally fairly seamlessly, and helps you build things quickly. So Lightning base components in LWC are little building blocks. This is something my son made. It's like a, that ball goes down that ramp. Anyway. Um, but it's like Legos. You can, these are all pieces you can use to assemble to build an application. And they're the, same, they're the same base components that already exist in Aura. So if you've used Aura base components, we have all of the same components in LBC. The, all of them. They're all there. And we use them internally to build Salesforce. So that's uh, something that people ask me a lot if I'm at a conference. Do you use LWC internally? Do you use the base components internally? And absolutely, this is what our application is built out of. So what's the same? Same components, the record form, advanced components, the simple components, the buttons, everything's there. They're all the same. It has built-in SLDS, so it looks like Salesforce. But what's different? And I think the big one I put there is, yeah, fed to back end. Uh, so you don't need to use Apex anymore. I mean, for many, many things. And that's really magical, and I'll show you a little bit about that. Um, and I think later Alba is going to have a really nice presentation about how to migrate from Aura to LBC, and she'll talk a little bit more about it. Um, so you can use the record form components for most simple data tasks, and complex tasks use wire services. And I'll show you that shortly. There's this thing called the Shadow DOM, which I recommend that you Google because it takes a lot to get your brain around, um, but it's a big difference. It basically means that your CSS styles don't penetrate inside of the light Lightning Web Component. So if you're using CSS, you can't style down inside. And reactivity, which I'm going to talk about, which I think is really important. So putting it together, I'm going to make a, I made a couple components here, and I'm going to show you that, um, how quickly you can build a useful component for Lightning with LWC and base components. <coughs> so this is the component we're going to build. Um, it says Les Miserables, but it's in fact, that's just a, it's a, that was the account, the name I picked for the account. Um, so let me show you with like a real demo, which I know no, everyone says never, ever do this. Um, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, so to start, I built a scratch org. Uh, can everyone see this OK? Let me make it a little bigger. Um, and I built my contact quick create. And you can see it's not very useful right now. Um, so what I want to do.
How do you make this bigger? I should have I should have thought that, uh, that earlier. Zoom. Oh well. No, it's throwing a bug. Anyway, okay, let me change this the resolution. That way it will work better. Okay, that'll be better. Okay, you can see a little better, I hope. Um, so this form component, <laughs> so I started out, this is, so in LWC, you have a template, which is just markup, so like HTML, and you have a class. So instead of having controller, helper, all the things you may be used to from Aura, just a class. It's just a JavaScript class. That's your component. You don't have to, there's not a bunch of other stuff. So I've created a tracked property, which means that it's going to be updated dynamically in the template that has the name. So OK, that's easy. I'll just put the name. And if I push the source through the magic of, F of SFDX, which if you're not using, you're missing out on a lot of great stuff. OK, so now it says contact or create for no name. Pretty simple. But the problem is, actually, I would rather have that be the name of the account. So how do I get the data? So that's what wire services are for. So I'm going to use this wire service, the UI record API service. <laughs> so that's a wire service that connects to the record API, which is a public API. It's a REST API. It's available. Um, so in order to interact with it, I use this notation, at wire, um, and I tell it what record ID. And since I've exposed this API, just like how if I've used force has record ID before in Aura, that I'm telling Lightning that I, I want a record ID. So it'll see that API and it'll inject it. So I pass that here. I give it fields. And you'll see this is weird, right? So this is what we call uh, referential integrity. So if you import a field like this, that tells Lightning and tells Salesforce that you, this is important. So if you're packaging, deploying, if you rename a field, if you do any kind of action that will have an impact on this, we'll throw errors and let you know that you're about to break your integration. So we strongly recommend, you can use the, the string, you could say name if you want, but we strongly recommend that you import this way. So then I hand, use a method, and I'm going to do this. And I want to mention something right here. This is what we call reactive programming. So the at wire, instead of doing what you do before, where you'd say, OK, I'm going to make an AJAX request. I want my data. Send my data back. And having a call back, instead of what I'm saying to the application is, this is something I want. And when it's available, give it to me. So we're reacting to it. We're not asking for it. And that's why I need to be a little more defensive, because I don't know when it's going to happen. And I don't know how many times it's going to happen. And I don't know if it might come back empty. So I say, OK, if I got the data and the result, then I know I got my response. Then I'll populate the name. And then, boom, data loaded automatically. It came in magically. I have the actual name of the account in my custom component. And it was that quick and that simple to deal with. Caching is handled for me. And the references are handled for me. So if the name changes, everything's going to be automatic. Um, so this is not that useful. It just has a title. So I want to actually have a form. OK, that's really uh, not that difficult. So I'm going to use the base component record edit form, which if you've used in Aura, it's the same in LWC. I put in my fields that I want to use, have editable. And you'll see something. I'm doing something kind of magic here. Because I want this to be associated, I want to make a, a new contact for that account. I'm actually passing the record ID as the value of the field account ID. So it's connected. Very straightforward. Right, now I have a form that I can fill out to create a new contact for this account. OK, so, you know, Dr. Roll. 
phone. Oh, hang on a second. Actually, I don't remember how many digits, but oh, I forgot to. But there's a problem. There's no button, so I forgot to add the button. And the save button. And if you you see right here, I'm using lightning button, using the variant brand, so it looks pretty. There's a talk also later today about using SFDX. I recommend you attend that. I can't remember who's giving it, um, because uh, with a VS Code, it's just amazing. Once you start going in, when you go away from the old workflow of either using Dev Console or using Eclipse and moving to VS Code with the SFDX, just your life gets so much easier. <laughs> Whatever, anyway, so I save this. And nothing, you saw that it was not a great user experience and nothing updated. So, but the related contact's been created. It's there, the data is updated. It's associated with this account. So if I go to this record page, I can see account name is Lindy's account. It's all connected, it all works. But that experience kind of wasn't that great, right? There was no spinner. There was no indication for the user that I was saving data. Okay, well, easy to fix. So I'm gonna use Lightning Spinner. Oh, by the way, I didn't mention I'm using Lightning Card. That's what gives it that little nice box when it shows up on the page. So, okay, I'm going to use Lightning Spinner. Lightning Spinner is a really simple component. If it's visible in the page, it shows a spinner. If it's not visible, it's hiding. So I say if true saving. So I'm going to add a few methods. Oh, I'm going to handle the events on the record edit form. I'm going to add the handlers here. that I made ahead, cheated a little bit. And I'm gonna track a property, have a track property called saving. <coughs> so now when I create a contact, get a spinner, and I just get that indication. And I didn't show you how I did it, but I also reset the values of all the fields when I saved. And you see something went wrong there, that when I reset all the fields, the account ID disappeared. Okay, so that's so here's the code I wrote to um, reset the value of the field. So it's really easy, actually. I can just make sure. Let me see the account ID. No, no, wait. Field dot field name. This way I can just check, and you can see here that in LWC it's just a regular element. So I can check the values of properties. I don't have to do get value, I don't have to use value providers or anything like that. It's just that straightforward. Um, so that's kind of the main, uh, that's the demo. I'm going to show <coughs> one more thing. I'll fix the reset. Um, but you'll notice in my uh, page, I have some other stuff. Um, like this list component over here. Um, my, I made a little related list account contacts component. And this one's different because I'm using Lightning Data Table, which looks pretty. Um, let me show you the, the code. Um, Lightning data table, which is a really simple way to make a cool data table. I'm using some stuff that I don't have time to get into really, but I'm using, there's a bunch of other stuff in Lightning, like Lightning Navigation Mixin, which, which is how I can create the links to link to a record page. I recommend you look this up, it's really useful. And then also, I'm using an Apex method. So you can call Apex from LWC. So, and then the way you use Apex from LWC is with a wire service. So you can create your own wire services with your own Apex controllers and connect it to LWC and it all just kind of connects together. Um, and this is really useful if you have a bunch of Apex you've already written and you're trying to move to LWC, all that stuff's available, it just works. 
and you can see also that I that there is this refresh refresh apex method, and that's because normally with a wire service we can identify when the cache is stale and automatically inject the new data, but with apex your apex controller we might not be able to tell from how you've written your apex controller if the data is stale, so we actually expose this refresh apex method so that you and that's how that refresh button that I created works. When I press this refresh button, it I call this refresh apex, and then it tr re-triggers the apex method to re-inject it into this page. Um, so I want to make sure we have lots of time for questions. Okay, and I press present. Okay, cool. So we did the demo. We don't have really time for this. Um, links to the examples. So this example I just showed you, the fully built example with both of the components are here on my GitHub. And then the LWC recipes repo on Trailhead apps is amazing. There are so many recipes in there. It's rather than reading documentation, you can just say, wait, how do I do X, Y, Z? There's so many examples there. So please go there and you will find so many answers to all your different questions. Um, and because I know you wanna see it, I'm gonna keep the links on the Q&A slide. Um, and now I really wanna hear if you have any questions about LWC, base components, why everything is broken, what I can fix for you. So does anyone have any questions? Please. Platform events is there now, um, and there are maybe a few things that are li missing, um, but it's very, very easy to connect the two. Um, so if you have something, so for example, force refresh view, which I don't know if you do this a lot, but if you want to force the pager onto refresh, you can fire it or event, and it's not available in LWC, but there's an easy pattern. You wrap your LWC component in an Aura component, you fire a custom DOM event out of your component, notify the Aura component, and then you connect. So that's why if there's certain pieces that you rely on, uh, there's always an option, but we're getting really close. I think, I mean, in this next release, so I guess in spring, we're get, actually, no, no, in winter, we moved internally so that the record home pages now are all fully LWC for standard objects and custom objects. So that was a big effort, and you, I mean, you wouldn't notice because it looks the same, but we've changed all the pieces, and so that required us to go in and get all the stuff that, that needs to work working. So the Flexi Pages renderer now, so that means Flexi Pages is when you use an app builder. So now Flexi Page is fully LWC top to bottom. Um, so I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah. Mobile? Mobile? Mobile is, so base components of mobile is a big effort we're in the process of doing right now. Um, and then there's a lightning on mobile effort we're on in the process of doing. So yeah, this is all on the way. I would say it's not ready yet, but it's all like fully, full speed ahead. My second question is about uh, lightning routes. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, so in lightning out, you're going to be using LWC in the Aura mode. So you create an LWC component and then you create your lightning out application the way you always did in Aura, but then you can use the LWC component or just a full LWC app but it's still going to have a or a wrapper around it in Lightning Out for now. Eventually, the theory is that we'll be able to export web components and replace Lightning Out with that. But that's not not there yet. Other questions? Bug bug reports. I fully accept bug reports. No. No. Okay. Well, I'll be around. So please. Through. Exactly on time. Okay, yes. Do I get a prize? Okay, okay. Perfect. Okay, well, thanks for coming. Thank you.